Welcome back to GB Guns. We're back from the range with the Citadel Warbird, this beautifully painted commander size 1911, and of course 45 ACP. I'm just wiping off some of the dirt. Of course, one of the great things about Cerakote is uh, that it's sort of a form of lubrication and uh, dirt wipes off very easily. Yes, I do separate just slide from frame quite often when I'm doing uh, a full length guide rod and don't want to mess with uh, the hassle that's involved there. A little bit of carbon buildup there I'm gonna have to work on looks like. Anyways, we did a abbreviated what's for dinner test. Also five shots from seven yards and then you get the impressions from myself as well as Burgundy Bomber who is a 1911 fan herself. So uh, I'm going to finish cleaning this thing up, get it all back together while you guys watch that footage and then see you on the other side. doing full mag plus one. Safety on, drop the mag, reload, safety off, here we go. Ran great. Thanks to our Patreon supporters, the what's for dinner lineup for 45 has slightly grown. We do have a steel case to throw in there, but mostly hollow points. A semi wad cutter from Black Hills, and then our lightest is all the way down here at 118 grain. Let's see how the Warbird does. All right, for target number one, I'll be using the ARX Inceptor 118 grain, which is really light for 45 ammo, so we'll see how it does. I do want to note the beautiful curvatures of the ammo. Love it. All right, target number one. A little high, nice triangle grouping. For target number two, I'll be using the Golden Saber High Performance Brass Jacketed Hollow Point, 185 grain. Doesn't have the beautiful curvature like the first one, but. For target number three, I'm hoping we're uh, gonna do a little better with this. We've got the Elite Performance Ammunition, the Sig V Crown 185 grain. So the ammo definitely felt great. It could, uh, I had more control over it and obviously had much better accuracy. For target number four, I'll be using the Hornady Critical Defense 185 grain. For target number five, we'll be using the Black Hills Semi Wad Cutter, 200 grain ammunition. Really funky looking projectile. Interesting. Okay. First one chamber. See how it does. Ran quite well, I'm impressed. Smoky. Smoking. All right, target number six, we'll be using the Winchester Defender Bonded Jacket Hollow Point, 230 grain, getting up there in the, in the grains. We'll 
snappy. Definitely can feel that heavier ammo in the recoil. Target number seven, I'll be using the Talamo 230 grain ammo. It's so heavy. Steel cased. Steel cased. Can't forget that. That actually felt like a lot less recoil, interestingly. Might have been a soft load. Yep. Five shots from seven yards. We'll be using the Elite Performance Ammunition 230 grain at the right circle square. Had one flyer. All right, five shots from seven yards, also using that SIG Elite Performance Ammunition 230 grain ball on the left square circle. I mashed that one. Mashed it again. All right, my thoughts on the Citadel Warbird. Uh, it's a beautiful gun. I absolutely love 1911s. I love the uh, full size gun, heavier ammo, um, especially coming out here and playing with it on the range. Um, this gun has some beautiful artwork. You can see the Miss Behaven has the uh, World War II nose art, which actually looks really awesome hanging out of your holster. Um, the sights are just black notch sights. I prefer something lit up like fiber optic sights or the night vision sights. Um, so I would probably do some aftermarket changes on that. But overall, the accuracy of the gun was uh, pretty darn great. It's going to be heavy recoil, of course, because of the size of the ammo. Um, I do enjoy the, um, the paddled safety. Uh, the slide release was super comfortable. The, I did notice on the actual safety though that it's a little bit sticky. Uh, we'll be playing with that to see if we can do some adjustments on that. The grip, uh, there's no serrations or anything on the front. It's super smooth and then there's some checkered griplings on the back which are super comfortable that allow some uh, awesome grip on the tang as some would say. Um, Trigger, of course, super comfortable. It's a 1911. Uh, minimal serrations on the front. You don't have that heavy aggressiveness, so it's really comfortable on the pad of your finger. Um, the bushingless barrel, super heavy and great for uh, controlling that recoil, especially for such, again, heavy ammunition. So overall, I really enjoyed shooting this gun So today. the Flinchman monster got me today. Uh, it happens sometimes. Uh, 45 is 45. The brake on this trigger being so nice and crisp, um, that the flinch was readily apparent in me pulling the gun down. On a squishier trigger, you might not have seen that. So that's actually a compliment to the gun's trigger uh, that you could see my flinch so hard in the impact. Um, fits the hand well. Uh, I have larger hands, some have said banana hands, or uh, like Military Arms Channel calls them, Yeti hands. But uh, on these commander-sized guns, uh, so long as you got the little pad there on the magazine, like the mags, the act mags that come with this, uh, very comfortable to shoot. I rest my thumb on the safety in a very classic style, helps control a little bit. So having this extended safety that was on here did make that a little more comfortable. I appreciate the lack of stippling or checkering on the front strap as, uh, well, you never know where your hand's gonna fit and like push it on there. So that made it comfortable. The gun remained beautiful. It 
fed everything that we put through it, uh, though it be a limited selection, we did hit a wide variety and including those semi wad cutters. I was really curious to see that. Didn't think they were gonna feed, honestly, uh, but they did and Burgundy Bomber shot great with them. The gun overall has been flawless. If I was gonna make a change, I think I agree with Burgundy Bomber. I would swap out the sights, but the great thing about a 1911, of course, is you've got that dovetailed cut in the slide to be able to knock out these sights and put in whatever your personal preference is. So what are your thoughts on this guy? I gotta say, the fit was not quite the same as it was on the nine mil model we had. I don't know if that's just the base gun or all of the fanciness that had to go into the painting on this. I've let them know about it and uh, they're looking into it. So I suspect that uh, any fit issues are going to be resolved uh, before any of you receive one of these uh, if you decide to order one. It's a beautiful piece. I think it looks really cool in the holster and it's a, a fun gun. Kind of one of those for uh, the guy who's already got the 45s that he wants and the price on these is well below what I believe it would cost you to buy a basic Commander 911 and have all of this paint job done to it. So in that sense, we've got a good value here. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.